Hey guys, Mark here. This is a little video of some tips for the honeybee. Uh, so the first tip is the carrying case. Um, the box you get the helicopter in is a carrying case. So if you're taking your helicopter to work, to school, putting it in the back of the car, before you do that, put it back in the box, carry it with you. That way it protects the helicopter and the uh, transmitter. Very, very good thing to do. Um, so again, don't throw your box away. The next tip that I have involves the transmitter. Now, when you first start out, you're going to be hold, you know, you're holding the transmitter. Now, you may, you'll see some people have a transmitter strap. Whoops. And that is, you know, nice neck strap where you can attach the transmitter to it. And this, that way, you don't have to so, uh, fully support the transmitter. The uh, strap does. Because um, myself, I always feel like I'm going to drop the transmitter if I don't have my strap on. So I always fly with a strap on. Now, a cheap alternative to one of these is you can go to all kinds of places, home hardware stores, get a neck strap for some keys. Because it works great. Now this, I bought at my home, local hardware store, Home Depot, and it was $2, $1.96, and it works great. Serves the same function. Um, not nearly as nice as my actual transmitter strap, but serves the same function. Cheap, quick, easy to get, um, you know, and there's all kinds of ones you can buy, though. But this was just, you know, a cheap, easy alternative. Now the next tip is just really buy a lot of spare parts. Buy more spare parts than you think you'll ever need and then buy some more. You can never have too many spare parts. And the Honeybee really is one of those helicopters that you will keep for a long time and you will fly it for a long time. Even after you know how to fly and if you can do all kinds of crazy 3D, it's a fun helicopter just to beat around with. Um, so like I said, just buy a lot of spare parts. Uh, next thing, buy a lot of batteries. You never have too many batteries. Thing is, is if you have one battery, you may be having that right at that breakthrough moment. The battery dies, you got to stop and wait for it to charge. If you have two batteries, you can continue on, and you're more likely to get that, you know, breakthrough moment, and you know, you'll progress a little bit faster. Uh, another thing, get a nice battery charger. Uh, this is my Sky Charger. I also have the uh, Thunder. AC6 battery charger from x -Heli. They both work great. Get any kind of computerized charger. It's going to charge your batteries faster. It's going to do a better job of charging them, keeping them balanced, which is keeping the voltages of each individual cell the same. Um, so I recommend you get a nice charger at some point in time. And this is an investment in the hobby because it, once you start flying, you're not going to stop. So you're going to need a good charger at some point in time. So buy it early on, it's just going to make life easier. Uh, another good thing to get, toolkit. It's my little toolkit here. I got this at x -Heli. Really cool. Because you open it up. Oops, there goes something. Comes with all, pretty much all the tools you need. Uh, all one nice little package. So I think you should get one of these. Uh, your toolkit should also include some super glue gotta have super glue if you own a honeybee should also have a little sewing thread because when you super glue things you super glue it and then wrap some uh, sewing thread around the part that you super glued and then soak the super glue into the thread makes it really really strong uh, you also want to get some zip ties those other stuff that stuff should be in your toolkit too uh, another thing you'll see here You've noticed that I've got the tips of my blades painted white. Uh, that's another thing I think you should do, because if you ever fly over a dark surface, being it, with these tips being white, you're going to see the tips of the blades a lot better, and it's going to make it a lot more visible for you. So it's going to be make it a little bit easier to see your helicopter and understand what it's doing. Um, so I really recommend you do that. And I just use just regular whiteout correction fluid. Uh, it's light. It doesn't add any weight to the blades, so I recommend you do that. Uh, and 
you know, that's if you're keeping the stock blades. Now, one of the other things I think you should do is upgrade the blades. Uh, my favorite blades are the Super Blades XP. They also have Super Blades Easy, but I think most people you should just skip those and get these ones. The Easy Blades are only for hovering. XP Blades, these things make hovering easier, but uh, they're more for forward flight versus the original EZ blades. So definitely pick some of these up. Uh, and probably the last tip I got for you is training gear. When you first start off, I definitely think you should get these. Now, I didn't use these when I was learning, um, but I've seen a couple of my friends as they're learning, and these things really will help you out. Uh, and there is kind of a method to getting these on. You want to put that, and then on the front here, you actually want like this. And then what you're going to do is you're going to zip tie it down. Okay, and the best way to zip tie this is to take it, and you want to come up. I'll show you here. This is what I got. Then the front one, you can just go ahead and do this one around the skit. But this is the best way I find to zip tie this tra training gear on here. And make sure you get these really, really tight. And just go ahead and cut the excess off. Okay, just a little better look at how I secure this on there. Just got the zip ties holding it on. And again, this is going to help so when you're taking off and landing, if the helicopter starts to tip over, this is going to keep it from tipping. I'm just going to show you some of the uh, benefits of using the training gear. Uh, now, one thing about the training gear is a lot of times the training gear is going to vibrate and it's going to make the helicopter vibrate. And the reason for this is the training gear. So if you're getting a lot of vibrations using the training gear, chances are it is the training gear. So don't worry if you get a little vibrations using it. Uh, but just to show you here what's cool about it. So when you're flying, if you come down and you're not landing just perfectly, the training gear is going to help keep you from crashing. Also, the training gear makes the helicopter bounce. So if you drop, if you just chop your throttle, the helicopter is just going to bounce around. Another good thing that the training gear is good for is helping you learn to scoot. Now, I'm, I really think everybody should learn to scoot. Because it helps you learn to control your helicopter without actually having to take it off the ground. But you can see, with the training gear on, it's going to be a lot harder to flip your helicopter over when you're having an unscheduled landing. Now, sometimes you may have no vibrations and land and have a whole bunch of vibrations. But again, it's just the training gear, so... but. Don't leave the training gear on too long because you're really not going to need to, but just in the beginning when you start learning the basics of the controls, keep the training gear on, but then once you start getting proficient at it, take it off because you're going to find it flies a lot better without the training gear on it. Isn't that cool? Well, those are my tips for the honeybee. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, look for my other videos, visit my website or my forum, and I will talk to you guys later.